Germany has a has a reputation for perfection, you know, <laughs> yeah. like wild styles. I've never seen such amazing wild styles until Jimmy. You guys come with it like hard. Uh, it's quite nice when something's a little bit boombastic and a bit, you know, almost confident in itself as the way it is. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. I got, I got, I can't remember. I, I thought it was Russell who told me, but uh, I, I'm not hundred percent sure. Somebody told me perfection is being insecure. So <laughs> when you really know your style is, is is solid and it's nice and has the funk, it don't have to be perfect. But that's something you have to learn because you have to grow into your style. When you're a beginner, when you're a rookie, that's the only point you can you can see. You can know if it, if it's clean. I got my my check. Okay, made it. Mm-hmm. If it's if it's matching to the ball, perfect. If I got kind of matching colors, perfect. There's just the stuff you can you can make on your on your bucket list. So anything else, the, the things you can feel and not see, you have to grow into it. And it took years, decades. Yeah, like that's that's personal, isn't it? It's killer killer podcast. Killer killer official dot com. <laughs> Street Culture TV. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Centrals you need to be choose to be. You don't want to be anywhere else. Big shout out to the sharers and carers, the people who have been supporting the craft of the podcast for so long. The pod trap is hot right now. We ain't stopping. We're just getting started. Our sponsors, the mighty GK Nifty Heads, have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hoddle Wars Summer 2024. Inside the house right now, we have a gentleman. I've got a feeling he's Nuremberg at the moment. Mannheim original. Stick up kids inside the place with Pag, Compadres, Cantu, and Dime. Uh, not to mention TRS. We have Pablo, aka Hombre, inside the house. How are we, my brother? Hey, man. So glad to be here. Thanks a lot for having me. I'm fine. It's a little bit late. It's a long day, but I'm super excited to be part of the show. I'm looking forward to the next 40 minutes. Oh, my brother. Yeah, I tell you what, time is flying, brother. Flying. It is. It is every day, every year, getting older, getting more tired. You know what it is? <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. Whereabouts are you in the world? Are you Nuremberg? Um, right now I am Nuremberg, yes. I came back from, from the trip at the weekend, but just uh, all over Germany with some friends, some galleries, some stuff like that. But now I'm back, hometown Nuremberg. Yeah, you're a, you're a uh, regional and international traveler. Your skills have set you apart and... Uh, you get around a lot, my brother. Yeah, yeah, but let, let's be honest. I, I'm tired. The last, the last two years, <laughs> I, I'm getting tired. Um, I try to travel a lot, and I try to to visit some jams, some some friends, some good events. But yeah, the the traveling, the kilometers, the miles, yeah, they they kill my my energy from time to time. So this year, I'm gonna make it a little bit more slow. Take you. You want to take it a little bit more slower? I can't imagine that, man. I can't yeah, imagine. You know, it's this work-life balance and stuff like that. So yeah, watch yourself a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be careful a little bit, right? Yeah. Um, what's the German scene saying at the moment, man? Um, hey, we're just starting. You know, spring is coming. Everybody was a little bit sleepy over the winter. I think it's the same all over the world. There are a few exhibitions. There are a few. I don't know, jams indoor, like the skater palaces and stuff like that. But yeah, you can see the sun's coming out today. We got 28 degrees Mm. Celsius, which is super hot. So yeah, summer is coming. So everybody Mm. is uh, waking up, preparing their cans. There are a lot of uh, festivals and jams already uh, dated for this year. Right. So I'm I'm pretty sure 2024 is going to be a colorful and nice year for sure. Hell yeah. At this point, I want a big shout out Whisk ABC inside the place. Um, he's definitely watching. And also big shout out to mutual friend of ours, Torch. <laughs> nice. Everybody that really is from an era that you're from, in a way. Um, we're talking about the the mid-90s. You you really kind of set precedence. And of course, like stick up kids were 
were really part of that movement that Germany seemed to have a stronghold on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So this this uh, late 80s, early 90s cruise, like Sticker Pits, for example, has really a, a big a- impact to the world of things. So we started with this with this New York stuff coming mm. overseas. And I remember especially also in in my Mannheim, my hometown, it's very close to Heidelberg, where Torch is coming from as well, and a Kane, for example, and knows a lot mm. of this, this, this legends. And they really they soaked up this this New York style of the of the late eighties, and they they put a little bit funk inside, and mm. they some of this you know made in German quality, um, yeah, and they they created something with big impact all over Europe, and I think all over the world as well. So these were the days were super impressive for myself, and these are the pictures why why I wanted to start with this art form so much, seeing this this colorful clean pieces especially back in the days when i started mm. i was super impressed by techniques as well you know at the beginning when you're a young guy you want to see colorful and clean stuff like that you know i wasn't that much into the dirty stuff that came later mm-hmm. um so my region was really a good school for for technique and for skills and for learn your tools and stuff like that there was also uh lumit who mm-hmm. added a hell of a lot of new style to it was almost like you guys for its time almost you changed the forecasts of how graffiti should look it and and it almost like gave it its own value and currency in a way where it was at one stage you know like graffiti at at its rawest and disposable and based on repetition and damage you guys gave it a whole th- three-dimensional four-wheel drive yeah. vibe to it. <laughs> yeah, I, I know what you mean. I, I think it was, we, we, or we, not they guys, was before me, of course, the next last generation. They put a lot of a lot of effort, you know? It's not like, okay, we are finished after two hours, let's go to the pub. It's more like, hey, we got three more hours daylight, so let's put some details in the background and maybe we, we paint the wall from top to bottom and not leave a, a gray whatever on the top stuff like that it's really yeah like yeah like you you use all your energy and your time to make it as good as possible and not just your style also the background the connections the everything like you said you read, read clouds and tags and 3ds on the tags and stuff like mm. that to mm. make it really popping out and this is hey, still today yeah even still today and the influence that that had on the you know with the rest of the world i mean you know europe as a whole but there was just something about the i think you guys were some of the first to actually like really work with the designs and what was coming out um brand wise in the paints you know just taking it to that next level um and then of course you had the magazines as well yeah it just you had a whole ecosystem going on for its time <laughs> Yeah, true, true. I think that the magazines helped a lot, to be honest, you know, for for inspiring other people, but also for getting inspired. So, you know, you can you can drive to one of these few stores back in the 90s and buy two or three magazines, which is not much for today. But back in the days, they were nothing. You're just sharing photos and stuff like that. So magazine with, I don't know, 50 pieces. Yeah. That was like a workshop for a year. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. You can, you can copy it, of course. Stuff like that. It was really, it's, it's like a, I call it um, ex- exposional. You know, you're growing so much bigger than without these photos and influences, of course. So this this ecosystem, which is today, of course, everybody's talk about sellouts, stuff like that for a while, not today. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but it helped also. Of course, it's a kind of a, a kind of a structure where people from outside of the scene getting rich and try to get involved and stuff like that. But it helped the scene as well, let's be honest. Interesting you say that. So you've you do you think you noticed a a rise? Like you're right about the sellout thing. I think yeah. uh with the, the emergence of street art and how that's propelled people from a, a non hardcore um scene. Do you did you feel that as an observer, did you see that in the the, the early to mid 90s as well from from a germany standpoint um 
from today's point, I can see it as a as a consumer and as an activist in the 90s. It was just nice to have, let's be honest, you know, you get new spray cans, mm -hmm. dope colors, new caps, more magazines. And when you are, I don't know, 30, 40, 50, teen, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. um, you don't think about this stuff. You don't think about who is running this system. You just... Yeah. You are happy to get the chance to buy new stuff and don't have to collect every little detail you find in some magazines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's cool. So back in the days, it was just super nice. But later, of course, you can see there were a lot of guys just wanted to get rich with this brand new culture. Yeah, for sure. Bro, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? We've got to be a similar sort of age. Uh, 43. Yeah, see, I'm 45. So yeah. you and me both kind of came through at a kind of similar point, right? Where yeah. it's just like, yeah, it's like it was electric that time. Yeah, yeah it is. I, to, to be honest, you know, there I thought it was so um, so annoying to go in the train and drive through hours to buy one magazine. Of course, <laughs> I, I, would I, I would love to have it like, okay, there was no online, but like order it and get it with the mail, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But, from point today, I'm so happy to get to all these points, to traveling with the train, to jams, to sleep on the train station, to, to collecting and to making exchange with sketches, photos, magazines, stuff like that. It's a way more private uh, connection than today, where everything is so uh, online, anonymous, and you don't mm. know nobody for real. Right, well, let's go back there. Let's take it back to yeah. you as a kid, as a young man. As a very young man. So how, how was Mannheim for you? How did you, how did you begin your journey in graph? Who influenced you more? Um, I was beginning there. I was in school and um, we got a few kids uh, came in from, came from Frankfurt, which mm -hmm. is super close to Mannheim. It's around about an hour, 90 minutes, stuff like that. And they changed school. So they came to my class and they brought it with them. They they started with Frankfurt some some tags and some throw ups. I'm pretty sure it wasn't it was mid, but for me it was the very first I really not just saw but recognized and see the process and see them sketching in school. And you know, for me, I, I was always the I, I was none of these cool guys. You know, I was not not sporty. I was not tall. I was a, I was reading, playing video games, stuff like that. A little bit nerdy, but mm -hmm. way before nerdy was cool. Um, so <laughs> yeah, so for me, I was super interested in because it was it was it was sketching, it was art, something I was good in because I always copied this Spider Man, Super Mario stuff, and mm. make my own sketches. So I thought as a way to to be part of the cool guys with something I'm good at. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's, I a, it's, a, it's just a short way to, to be part of the school guys. And, and I started and we, you know, like everybody in the basement of the, of, of the parents, sketching, drinking <laughs> the first beers, stealing outside. Yeah. And, and let's be honest, for me, I tell this in my workshops, the kids for the whole time, it, it wasn't the art who really soaked me into this, this culture. Mm -hmm. It was the, the vibe and the flavor. Because you, you're sitting around two, three, four, five guys. And, okay, this was only guys in the 90s, you know. There was no women, no girls. <laughs> yeah. And you give yourself an, an alter ego. You give a secret name. And you yeah. sneak outside wearing a mask, writing a name nobody is allowed to know on the wall. So you got this, this little mobster feeling, you know what I mean? So you're a, yeah. little, you're a little criminal. So, But not that much. You hurt nobody, but you're a little criminal. Yeah. And when you are 12, man, that's that's heaven on earth. It's so fascinating. So I wanted to do that for sure. No matter if I'm good or not, it doesn't matter. I just want to be part of this flavor. Yeah. Secret society. Yeah, exactly. I love that idea. Mm -hmm. And it's like you said, as a 12-year-old, like, you don't, I mean, first of all, you do feel like you're absolutely immortal, right? Yeah, of course you are. <laughs> And then, you're, and then, a superhero. And then, you're a superhero with a, with a secret name and stuff like that. Super, like, in, like in the comic. Yeah, 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 exactly. So who, who are you running with at that age? I mean, we're talking old school names right now that probably ain't, ain't about so much, right? Yeah. Hey, we had, I don't know, I, we have some big heroes in Mannheim who are, who are still legends. We have, we have Gizmo. We, okay. had, uh, we, had a, we had a few cane pieces. We had Scare. Props to all of these guys. Wow, yeah, no, those are OG. Yeah, I know those ones. <laughs> yeah, scary, these, especially these, these are really OGs. So, wow. uh, and as soon as I 
as I started to to do it, as to be an active part of this culture, of course, your eyes are way more open than before. Mm. And then you see tags everywhere, throw-ups everywhere, bombings, and you you start to learn the language, the attitude, the people, similar to the like, uh, and it's the same time you learn the technique. So you want to be you want to also be part of this this game, and you have to learn, yeah, being part of it with the uniform, with mm. the language, stuff like that. And remember, we are 12, you are 13. So it's really in your in in a time when you when you soak up everything and your your character gets shaped so much. Really? So this is the age where you stop listening to your parents and start listening more to your friends and to yourself and heard to your inner voice. Mm-hmm. And and this inner voice and my friends as well was was graph 24/7, 100 percent So my mom made a pretty good job for 12 years and then Graf took over and made 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 another good job. So Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That the the uh the stepmother came in and exactly, exactly. <laughs> took over. Um who was there any uh, you know, talking of role models, were there any? Were there any like parental, like elder graph writers, people that were your peers that helped uh-huh. you along? The, the the problem was I really started from the very beginning with with, with characters. Of mm-hmm. course, I do some tags and stuff like that, but I, I wasn't good at it. I started, you know, nobody's good when you start something new. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, okay. I, but I was also good with these characters because I painted before and sketched before and was into this comic book scene, stuff like that. So I was always asked for the black books, can you paint me a, I don't know, Spider-Man next to my piece, stuff like that, blah, 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 blah. Everybody was happy. Mm-hmm. But the scene wasn't that much. Of course, characters back in the days were just next to style. It was all about style writing. If you're not writing your name, you are not a writer. So I'm just a character painter. So it was it was super tough, to be honest, to get exact by a few people I really wanted to impress. You know, this these legends, this this idol I know from my, my hometown or super close. Mm. And they told me, you know, your, your stuff sucks. Of course, you don't paint letters. And there were just a few people in my area who painted characters as well. Mm-hmm. And these are, I don't know, maybe two or three years older than myself. I remember th- there was this guy, Mui. He's a Turkish guy from my hometown. He's still painting. He is one of uh, just a few guys who really were able to, to teach me, to tell me a few stuff. All this other guy told me, learn letters or quit. Really? Yeah. Yeah, hey, we talk about 1995, 1994, something like that. So, it was yeah. all about letters, especially like I told you before, with this New York spirit in your mind. Mm. You know, it's letters, it's writing, characters are just decoration. Background. It's got to be real, it's got to be real. You've got to be able to do all of it at once, kind yeah. of. You know. Is there a particular reason why? Because, I mean, to me, that seems... If someone says to me, do something to that force... That's going to make me go, nope. <laughs> exactly, 100%. You know, you do the completely opposite. Yeah. Everybody told me, stop this, don't do this character bullshit. Okay, I invest more time in character bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. And it, the, the te- you can learn the technique by yourself. You know, there wasn't that much tricks you can learn with the cans from the 90s. Just practicing. Mm. Just do it. And I remember there were a few years where I really painted... 60 walls or 60 characters. So every week, sometimes two times a week, I go out practicing, painting. And this is a hey, whatever I do, practicing makes masters. Just do it for yourself. Learn we'll a few tricks, ask a few people, but at least do it and do it and do it. Repetition is key. And one thing that has yielded, there's a word for you, yielded such uh, quality has been your repetition. And Looking at your characters now, um, in 2024, they are so, bro, they are so identifiably you. Like, <laughs> you, you would have had to have done a lifetime of training. Do you know what I mean? To get that level, crazy. Yeah. But, but it's really funny because, you know, today, w- whenever people see my stuff, it's, okay, it's, it's not like this... Uh, 2d b-boy characters from the side but but it's old school you know of course it's 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 clean colors it's it's kind of clean shadows stuff like that it's 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 a reduced shape 
more or less. Mm. So for for people who are 20 today or 21, 22, whatever, it's it's an old school style. And and back in the day where we were old school living, it was it was nothing. It was worthless. There was no value about these characters. It's, it's for me sometimes it's really crazy when I talk with younger guys. So ah oh, man, you got this old school flavor. And it's, uh, the old school flavor was character sucks. So it's it's not the typical old school for me for my personal experience, of course. Yeah, that's that's interesting. That 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 falls in line with with what they think is old school, because. Yeah. Because in fact, it's it's kind of neither old nor new. It, to me, it's time. Genuinely, it's timeless. It doesn't appear to be like you said. Because if you if you if you trace back that that defined old school look, mm. you know, it's it's cla- it's classy, but it's not. Yeah. You know, like Can Two, yeah, his character, yeah, his character is 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 a is a classic. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. It's classic, and and a lot of it comes from those magazines and all those logos and the things that that he embodied back then. Um, and yours for me is like timeless. Like, how can you draw a comparison? It certainly certainly not throwaway in an old school sense. I think for for these guys, you know, I, I don't I don't want to talk, talk for these people, but I think when they talk about this old school thing. They talk way more about um, flavor over technique. You know, of course, of course, today you can make this photorealistic stuff, or you can make this glowing eyes. Blah blah. blah. I, you know, today there are so many people who are who are maniacs with a spray can. They can mm-hmm. do stuff I can't do digital. But this is mm-hmm. this is handcraft. But the 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 style, the flavor is something you don't need all these lights and this and that you know mm-hmm. it's just just pure and i think for these kids something without this decoration mm. is old school to make make it simple in their heads that's it. Yeah. and that's something i can deal with if you if you tell me in my work is more flavored than technique i'm fine with that i know there's technique i know it's not easy to do it but mm-hmm. When they say me, there's more flavor inside. I can live with that, bro. Flavor <laughs> over technique all day, yeah. all day. Yeah. Um, it's very rare I get a chance to talk to someone who's who specifies in um, in character design and has 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 achieved it to such a high level. My thoughts go to when you're in front of the wall. Mm. <laughs> you're in front of the wall and you you've got to keep a sense of perspective mm. because it's quite a challenge like keeping your eye on the piece to a level of realism characterful energy funk like mm. and then you stand back and you're like yeah i think we got it but you're in the zone so close to the wall and in the zone getting the details and how do you what goes through your head like like how do you fill in the blanks i think i think it's really like you said this, this zone this tunnel when i got i got several times when i'm i'm finished with the wall and i look at it and you know there there are so many layers of details you know mm-hmm. but it's not not the plan before you start when you, when I start with a with a basic simple sketch, you got a you got a rough idea, you got a rough skeleton of what's gonna be on the wall later, mm. and then it's really I I'm super addicted to this little this and that, you know yeah we can paint a little earring and ah, we can do some lights on the earrings ah we do some letters in the earrings we do this bamboo stuff out of the nineties and we make mm. some highlights here and then there's a little cable from the head blah 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 mm. and then you are on layer. 20 at the end and you step back and you see oh, damn and you met so much stuff but when you show me at the beginning what i what i should do you know there are 20 layers we have to paint till five o'clock so, oh man that sucks a lot so it, it only works when it's a it's a process i'm i'm very focused on just one part on one layer and then the next and then the next and then the next and after that the blanks are filled there, there is no blanks everything is Full of details and little bows and crew tags and stuff like that, mm, and stuff like that. When you when you, <laughs> you talk about layers, right? So, okay, first outline, 
first colours feel feels like how, how deep do the layers go? Um, this is giving giving away the trade secrets here, people. Keep those ears open. <laughs> hey, I, I give an example on my on my eyes, for example. I remember, of okay. course, today when when I'm painting an eye, I got. I got, I got, I painting the, the shadow of the eyeball first, let's say a, a mid gray. Mm-hmm. And then, then I put the light into, which is a, I don't know, a, an ivory, something like that, for example. Mm-hmm. And then let's, let's, a third layer now, let's, um, let's make the eyeball a little bit glow. Because what I call is con- contouring in makeup. When you got a, when you got a, an edge. Mm hmm. Just make it glow a little bit more on the light side mm. to make it more popping out a little bit. You know what I mean? You got, mm. got an ivory, you got a gray, and then you had the edge which you which you highlight a little bit with a light uh, with a white. Okay, yeah, got you. Popping out a little bit. Mm. Okay, now you got kind of an eyeball. Sometimes on the on the bottom, I do a little drop shadow from the from the lead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then I do do some. Some dark gray or transparent black from top to make it to make the shape the ball shape as well, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then I add the uh, the, the pupil the you know what the, I mean, the yeah. color yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, which get we have start with the outline for example a super dark brown, and then I I fill it with a with a mid brown, mm-hmm. and there where the ivory hit it the gray mm-hmm. I'll do a, a light brown in the mid brown you know. Yeah, and then you ha- yeah exactly. Now we are on level I don't know nine. Yeah, and then you have, you have a little a little black point in the middle. Yeah, and then you make a, a white highlight to make it glow a little bit. Mm. And where the white is covering the the pupil, you have to make it a little bit transparent. Of course, it shouldn't just be white on the mm-hmm. eyeball and just like you know just. And back in the days, it was just a black dot and sometimes a white dot. As a highlight, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just, it's also based on your on your skills and techniques. When you're getting better, and you can can paint smaller and more detailed with with pressure, with leaving a little bit out of the fume and stuff like that. You want to add more. You want to expand your 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 skills. So mm. just more. I don't know how my eyes look in ten years, but there will be a few more layers for sure. Really, that is crazy. How long does it take you? Some real layman's questions here. Some real basic bitch questions here. It's because I'm totally give it to me. Give it to me. It's like totally curious about your this process. So, what? What? How long? How long is an average piece? Can it take? Can that take days? Um, depends on the sizing, of course. But but when it's a normal Hall of Fame, like I don't know, three meters. Mm. No, I don't paint over two days. It's one day, and I and I'm slow. Let's be honest. I'm not, but I don't want to hurry myself. Of course, it's fun. I want to enjoy the day. I want to expand it over the whole day. Um. So let's say six hours, five hours. I'm not fast. I'm not a bomber guy, but I can't. I can't keep the the vibe over two or three days. Mm. So of course, when you paint a mural with I don't know four levels. Of course, it takes three, four, five days, but a normal piece should be done in one day. And do you do any mapping? Do you like do you kind of work? Yeah, yeah. The last I don't know, two day, two years, three years. Yeah, yeah. I do this doodle grid like the the whole scene does, and I know a few people call it cheating stuff like that, blah blah blah. But um, it, it's so crazy what it does with my with my confidence when I go to the wall. Of course, mm-hmm. I had sometimes. Of course, I had problems. I got a sketch, and I started with you know classic. You make a you make a ball for the head, the nose, and then go deeper. And fuck, I wanted to paint it to the hip, <laughs> and now I'm just at the shoulders and I have to stop because the wall is over. It happens yeah. a lot. But these really? days, wow. with this with this doodle grid, is when I'm happy with my rough sketch, I know it's going to be a dope piece. Of course, anything else is just technique handcrafting and I, I know i can handle that it's no problem mm-hmm. so it really helps me to focus on the part i love to do the details the colors the outline stuff like that and i don't have to think about proportions and stuff like that do you have a com- um, obsessive compulsive like nature like what do you mean sorry 
Sorry, do you do you have like an obsessive compulsive behavior where you're you 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 obsess on the details like they have to be perfect and in your head or it gives you anxiety or makes you feel oh, it's not right? Uh no, I I I really try to to leave it behind me. Of course, <laughs> I I don't know at the beginning I was really obsessed with with make it perfect, you know, it should it should look like a print cut every line, make it clean as possible, stuff like that. But today I really think when you make it too clean, when it's, and there is a too clean, mm. um, it lost its soul. So I'm, today, there are a few details I want to have perfect. For example, the eyes, like mm. I told you before. Um, but on the other side, sometimes I really like to make a, make a quick uh, a shuffle, don't fill it completely, for example, or <laughs> you know, if, if a little bit fat cap flare goes over the outline, I don't care, you know, it, it's hand painted, it's artwork, it's not a print, it's not just decoration, it should be handmade. You can see the little dust and the little mistakes and stuff like that. Yeah, I feel that, man. I mean, for starters, like, you know, eyes are the entry to the soul. So if you don't get the eyes right, it's a problem. But But it's quite <laughs> nice, man, when... Germany has a has a reputation for perfection, you know, yeah. like wild styles. I've never seen such amazing wild styles until Jimmy. You guys come with it like hard. Uh, it's quite nice when something's a little bit boombastic and a bit, you know, almost confident in itself as the way it is. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. I got. I got. I can't remember. I I thought it was Russell who told me, but uh, I, I'm not hundred percent sure. Somebody told me perfection is being insecure. So <laughs> when you really know your style is, is is solid and it's nice and has the funk, it don't have to be perfect. But that's something you have to learn because you have to grow into your style. When you're a beginner, when you're a rookie, that's the only point you can you can see. You can know if it, if it's clean. I got my my check. Okay, made it. Mm -hmm. If it's if it's matching to the wall, perfect. If I got kind of matching colors, perfect. There's just the stuff you can you can make on your on your bucket list. So anything else, the, the things you can feel and not see, you have to grow into it. And it took years, decades. Yeah, like that's that's personal, isn't it? It's personal. Yeah, I love that. How did you uh, how did you become a part of SUK? How did that come about? Um, uh, there was that. That's a nice hip hop story. Let's be honest. Uh, <laughs> Everyone was, loves a good and nice hip hop yeah, story. That, that's dope. <laughs> I, I I can't remember the year, but I know uh, Puma made a. I think it was a glide, but maybe it was a few. I'm not sure. They make a Bode edition mm. to make the the red Puma and the um, uh, the the soul inside. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I had this the star pattern stuff like that, and on the on the phone you have this little body character. So they released it, and the Stieber twins, you know them? Yes, I love sure the you Stieber know twins. them. Yeah, I love the Stieber twins. Yes, big and up boys. They got a they got a store in Heidelberg. Still have them, nice. um, and they make a little a little backyard party for the release. So they make a barbecue, they some freestyle stuff, so this and that, and they um, they sponsored a few big canvases. And invited a few friends to paint an interpretation of a body character. And they asked Scotty, for example, Sir Scott a lot. And uh, they asked Atom, they asked Cantu, and they asked, and they asked the little Ombre as well. <laughs> so a, I think Kane was there as well, but I'm not sure. So there's five, six people, all of these legends and the little boy. Too much. Um, wow. It was awesome. It was when the vibe? It was in summer. We got a barbecue. All of this, this brown bricks, it was, mm. like 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 wild style, like into the movie. It was awesome for me. It was like your uh, head must have been going crazy, bro. I, I try to be cool so much, you know. <laughs> that that shouldn't be my my fanboy moment, but of course it was my fanboy <laughs> yeah, moment. The twenty, right? <laughs> yeah. So, but it was there. I try to enjoy. I try to paint the kind of a good canvas. And right next to me, Cantu was painting. And and I remember I, I wrote him a few weeks before uh, a mail on MySpace. 
Remember that? Mm-hmm, of course. Yeah, yeah of, of course. course. So I write him a mail, and I remember pretty sure I write him, uh, sir, I'm not sure if you read your emails by, my, by yourself or if you've got a secretary, whatever. I just want to say I'm a huge fan, blah, blah, stuff like that. And I, this was the time I painted 10 years already. So I was not this super, super toy, but I was super humble. And Cantu was and is the legend himself. So, yeah. so I just wanted to give him some flowers and spread some love. That's it. So. And he wrote me back, just a few mails. I mean, yeah, of course I read my mail. Thanks a lot. I love your work as well. And so, oh, okay, nice. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And then we met the first time in person at this backyard party. And he painted right next to me. And of course, you can't spend the whole day without talking. And even if I wanted to be humble and I wanted to be cool, after a while, you start a little conversation like this yeah. and like that. Yeah, and so we, we get in touch the very first time. Then we wrote a mail from time to time. And he asked me if we want to make a piece together, just in my hometown, just a, a, not a secret spot, but a quiet spot, not mm-hmm. that much people. Super cool. We came, he painted two characters, a huge piece, and the background in the same time I try to paint one character as good as it gets. Machine. He's he's a maniac. He's wow. incredible. Um yeah, and then I, I remember the day, but not the date. I'm sitting in, in my office and I get a um a short message uh, on my mobile. And so ah, blah blah. Hey, I just thought about um get some some young blood in the crew. Would you be interested? What? And I, and and I really thought, okay, okay, that must be a mistake. I must be red. He he <laughs> he asked me for who you see in the crew or something like that. You know, he yeah, asked yeah, me yeah, for yeah. That. And I said, <clears throat> um, I don't know, maybe maybe this. And then said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I asked already. Um, yeah, Matt C was on the same day. Um, part of the Thick of Kids and wow. um, J Flo from from Korea. And so right. yeah, I, I asked them already, but I asked you as well. He said, oh, come on, man. So it's like, it's, that's not a question. Of course, it would be. I don't know. It would be a pleasure to be part of this King Arthur knights of you know killing the, the style dragons. It was so awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's not a question. It's more of a. It's more of a statement. It's more of him telling yeah. you. It's like you're not yeah. going to say no. It's like yeah. Of okay. course not. Of course not. <laughs> and I remember I got my my stick up kids tattoo. Two days after that, yeah, I course. wanted to to manifest as soon as possible, just in case it was a mistake. Then it's too late. You know, I got tattooed. You can't kick me out. Come on. <laughs> yeah, no kicking me out now. No, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Wow, that, that was, is the that most. Was, that is one of the most hip hop stories I've heard in twenty twenty four yet. <laughs> and it's really for me. It's a lot of people ask me. You no, know, of course. There are so many people in the crew, let's be honest, all over the world. And there are a lot of people I, I never met till today. And even with the German guys, I think the the, the, the maximum we, we were together were five people on one place painting a piece. So there is not like a like a big stick up kids jam. It's it's not possible. We are grown up men having businesses all over the world. Yeah. It's difficult. And so of course there are a few voices who told me this is not what a crew should be. But of course, like they always you, say that, don't they? they always yeah, say that. Of course. But for me, it's like you said, be, being part of the Sick Up Kids is a that that's a statement. So that's a yeah. I'm part I'm I'm part of the of the elite of this style, which is defining my kind of graffiti, like this late '90s high quality, super advanced style killers, and I'm I'm part of it. So for me, it's like. I'm wearing the jersey of the team I was cheering up since I was a little kid. And I can play in this league now. Talk that I, shit! Talk that yeah, shit! It, yeah. it doesn't matter if you have a barbecue every Saturday. So I'm part of this team. They wanted me because they see the same flavor in me I saw in them over decades. So it's perfect. For me, Hell that's yeah. Good. I absolutely ap- applaud that. You know, there's, there's only some crews... Which you can say, yes, they, yeah. them. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, <laughs> Rocksteady crew, maybe. Yeah. yeah. You know, from an international point of view, for sure. Yeah. Um, do we all go out and, you know, have barbecues? No. <laughs> <laughs> because not it, every weekend. Not every weekend, anyway. But, you know, yeah. it's, it's not really... I mean, I know people have their own opinions of crews, but, like, if you're as well... 
connected organizationally. Yeah. Do you mean that is far more powerful globally? Yeah. Of course. I, I, you know, when you are 15, I got your point. It's important to hang out with your guys, to, to share a sketchbook, to go yeah. out together and painting trains. Cool. Absolutely. 100%. But it's something you you can change when you are 30 or 40 or 50. Let's be honest. You can't share every Wednesday and Saturday with your guys. Mm. You have two kids at home. You have a wife. You have a job. You have to travel. You have to pay. That's not possible. That's no. just not possible. It's not possible. And I think a lot of times, I mean, correct me if, if you think otherwise, but I often feel like the people that make those statements about, you know, crews need to be da 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 da, da. Are people mm. that actually haven't advanced in, like, their thinking of, like, what graffiti writing collectively should be? Or, or could be, you know? Yeah. It's like, yes. yeah, it, 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 but it should be. The graffiti has so many elements right now. For me, it's always cool. When you when you painted a lot in the 90s, but hey, you, got a, you got a job, you got a wife, you got a kid, and you meet two times a year for your birthday and for Father Day yeah. to have a barbecue and paint a nice wall with the guys from back in the days. That's fine. Yeah, absolutely. that's cool. Yeah. Absolutely. And of course, for you, this is the kind of graffiti you want to live. Of course, there's no other option as well. Let's be honest. You can't do it 24-7. No. Nah. But nah, there is nah. a way and there are people who do it like that. Who yeah. travel the world for six months and they, they can't live your kind of graffiti, which is okay. Do your stuff, let me do my stuff, everything's fine. There's enough space and whatever for all of us. Like one up, for instance, you know, they 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 roll collect it feels like they roll collectively. Yeah. Exactly to how we're explaining, but also they're global. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like it yeah. and in, in their way it makes sense. Like you say, it's each to their own, isn't it? It doesn't have to be one particular way that you have to yeah. point the crew out and say you're not real, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's funny that. It's funny how, it, what's interesting is the attitude, you know, it, it's the same, it's a similar common attitude of kind of purism in the UK as what we're talking about here globally. It's, it's very interesting how how that attitude can sometimes come about, isn't it? I think it's always, you know, it, it's easy to hate things who are not part of your 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 bubble. You know, when you live another life, it's easy to hate other people. Yeah, but yeah, you have to you have to be open minded because graph is, these days is so big, it's so huge, so many different facets. It's okay, it's cool, let it grow. But mm -hmm. it's funny because it's selfish. I remember another super short story. I yeah, man. In, it's in Italy, and there was a few young guys who make interviews with the artists, and they got a super nice question because it wasn't so so basic. They asked me if you have like I ask everybody if you have two animals to define graffiti, which two animals you would pick? That's a mad question. Okay. Yeah, man. <laughs> so what, what's your answer? Answer first. <laughs> Mine? What two animals do, do, what, do you pick graffiti? Yeah. Uh, wow, that's a good question. Tiger. Mm -hmm. Elephant. For, okay, tiger for the, for the camouflage? For being, yeah. Okay, okay. An elephant for the size and the brains. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, I, I had peacock. Nice. Because they're super selfish, and I get <laughs> and I got and I got monkeys for putting shit on everything. <laughs> Good. Each other. So for me, till today, these would be my two animals because that's graffiti for me. Oh, they are nice animals. They are cool. And a few of my best friends are animals, but they <laughs> behave like raccoons on meth. It's just you know, you have to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, part yeah. Of this thing. You know what's funny is that, you know, graffiti artists, some of the most, um, you know, noted and uh, worldly known and pioneering and credit, you know, it's a mix, it's a mixed fruit bowl of fruit, isn't it? And, you know, it is. It is. <laughs> and the crazy different. thing is, whenever, whenever people from outside talk to you, they think that all graffiti writers are, are the same. They are <laughs> friends with each other. Like, it's like like telling me everybody's playing playing football. Yeah. Soccer is the same type of guy. No, we just share this one element. We're yeah. painting at the wall. That's it. Next to this, completely different person. Totally, totally. Yeah. But that's the beauty of it, isn't it? It's of course, yeah. It's all one and big dance. 
and and for me, I think especially this 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 common thing is so much bigger than all of the differences. Because whenever you are in the world, when you go to the airport and get picked up by a graffiti writer, it doesn't matter if he is a, a cannibal. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so you know you will have a good time because of this little graffiti part you share with each other. You're going to have a good day. You're going to have a bed. You're going to have some good food just because both of you are doing graffiti. Isn't that crazy? That, that's, that's awesome. It's, well, it's amazing. I mean, I don't think there's any other art form like it that, you know, I mean, of course, there are hip hop genres. Yeah, um, yeah. But this is, but we're talking about something that is, it's, um, it, it's therapeutic. People share that, that creative space yeah. together. It's crazy. So it, like, even if you don't speak the language, you know, with hands and feet, like this karate language, um, you will you will have a connection. Yeah, this is especially today with the with the yeah, possibilities to connect worldwide. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm pretty sure you know wherever in the world you are, just drop a message, post a story, whatever, and you will have a bed, and mm -hmm. you have some breakfast. Yeah. It's Just so be, true. Hey, with people you never heard of and you don't know, it doesn't matter. You know, you you are part of this game. We share what we got. God, that's good. God, that's good. Uh, yeah, my brother, honestly, we could do this all night. Um, but honestly, your contribution to the the bigger tapestry of the Killer Keller podcast uh, is greatly appreciated, my brother. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Hey, it was a real, real pleasure. It's so much fun. I, I, I hope I could make a few points clear. You know, I talked to you before. The, the language is difficult, but you no. Know, oh yeah, my... we couldn't understand a word. You were sprung. Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> hey, th thanks a lot. It was really so much fun. My brother, listen anytime, and um, I'm gonna definitely holler at you when I'm next in town, bro. I got you, man. You got a bed. You got breakfast. Whatever you want, just my give me a call. And likewise to you too. Get yourself to London, man. We need some yeah. energy. Be quiet. I'll be there this year. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll write you a line. I'm ready, man. Let's do it. Cool, man. Killer cool. Killer Podcast. Dala in was out of fashion, man. Big shout out to Ombre, of course. And uh, yeah, loads more podcasts. 500, in fact, in the back pocket. If you want to go check them out. Listen, don't talk to anyone and I wouldn't, all right? Crime don't pay, but neither do they. You stay lucky, people. Easy. Easy.